many people out here as the rain comes down. Uh, and we are resolute in our opposition to what this government is doing. And I think we owe it to Debbie and to all those others who have died at the hands of this Conservative government to carry on united. And as has just been said, I think this is a moment of opportunity. I think we're seeing things change radically. And if we've learned anything from the last year and the last year and a half is that things can change seismically in a very short space of time. And we're starting to see the cracks emerge and now is the time to fight. We've seen, we've seen with Brexit an unexpected outcome. Many of us would have voted remain, some possibly voted to leave. But the point was we heard a cry from people that business as usual is no longer an option. We know with the election of Donald Trump in America that things are happening there and people are turning against uh, the new right. They are turning against the economic orthodoxy, the economic liberalism that has caused so many to suffer. They are turning against the lie of austerity and they are turning against the politics of divide and rule. Now we're seeing it we're coming out very, very strongly with the Tories. We're seeing it coming out very, very strongly with Donald Trump. We're seeing families set against one another. We're seeing the policies of divide and rule come to their climax, but you know what? They're reaching their peak, and that means they're going to fall even harder when they do. We have an important message to deliver, and I think we also see in Ken Loach's new film, and in the film, the same way that we saw with Kathy Come Home. I don't know how many people saw it on the telly the other night. It was screened again. I was moved once again by that film that Ken Loach made reference to in his statement, Kathy Come Home. At the end, what really hit home to me was the words flashed up on the screen. This was just 21 years after the end of the Second World War in 1966. Just 21 years after a huge debt was run up by this government and the government of Germany. But the words flashed up on the screen. West Germany, as it was then, have built twice the number of homes that Britain have in the last 21 years. And it suddenly hit me. You know what? It comes down to political will. There is enough money. The problem is there is not the political will to get it, to use it, and to spend it in the right places. Austerity is a lie. We need to say it loudly and clearly. It is not right that austerity is being pushed forward on the backs of those who can least afford to bear it. It is not right that communities have been turned against one another over the issues of migration, but also over the false dichotomy of those who are deserving and undeserving. We need to be as proud of our welfare state, as proud of our social security as we should be of our NHS. And remember after the Second World War, even though our debt was far higher as a proportion of GDP than it is today, 250% it was, but we set up the NHS, we set up the welfare state, we came together to demand change and we need that same post-war spirit today. That same spirit which says no more. We won't accept what's gone before. We can be better than this. We deserve to be better than this. And I'm talking about the future for my son, who's 14 years old, a wheelchair user, who had his hospital appointment cancelled four times because the government has not invested in the NHS. I'm talking about your friends and your family and the people here today. I'm talking about the 10 million deaf and disabled people in this country known to every single one in this country. Everyone knows someone who is deaf and disabled and that's why we are going to win this battle because it's based in the lives of real people of personal experience. And we're reaching that point, we will say no more and we will say no more welfare reform loudly and clearly. No more! No more! Thank you very much, Jonathan.